All right, for today's video review, we're going to be taking a look at Transformers Generations Legacy Deluxe Class Prime Universe Knockout. Uh, yeah, this has been a figure that I've been excited about for a while. Uh, Transformers Prime is actually my very favorite Transformers cartoon, and uh, Knockout was definitely a standout character from that show, and I've never had a, a Knockout figure before. The original Knockout from the actual Transformers Prime toy line I never thought looked particularly good, so I never bothered picking it up. And uh, yeah, this figure is maybe not perfect in terms of what I'd want out of a knockout figure, but it is definitely nice to get some version of the character. And I do think that all things considered, this is a pretty nice figure overall. And uh, yeah, he looks absolutely stunning in his vehicle mode here. I think that this is definitely one of the places in which the, the figure shines the most. Uh, he has a lot of really nice painted detail, which is reminiscent of the... Uh, you know, the detail that Knockout had in the Prime cartoon. Love the uh, the gold rims there on the uh, on the wheels themselves. And uh, yeah, you know, he's not, maybe not the exact type of car that he was in the show, but I definitely think it gets the uh, the point across. And um, it's it's pretty impressive, actually, because this figure is a uh, actually a retool of the Studio Series uh, Jazz mold. And uh, you could hardly tell by looking at it in vehicle mode because it, it really, aside from just having, you know, obviously different coloration and deco and everything like that, it's pretty heavily retooled. So it's a pretty different shaped car as well, which we'll show off in a bit. But yeah, no, I'm really thrilled with the car mode. I think it looks really nice. Uh, it rolls nicely, which is, again, you know, not something that we can expect on... Uh, <laughs> on modern figures all the time. Sometimes the wheels get a little gummed up, but no, he rolls pretty well. Uh, he comes with a couple weapons here. Uh, he comes with this bit, which you can either use as a, a weird sort of long gun or as a uh, as part of a staff. And then it comes with this bit, which you can attach to the end of it uh, just by pegging in like that to be sort of reminiscent of the uh the staff weapon that he had in the transformers prime cartoon it's not exactly shaped the same but you know kind of giving off the same vibe now unfortunately in terms of storage in this mode you're just supposed to peg this onto the top of the car which i don't think looks good um it kind of ruins the whole disguise thing, but like, eh, you know, this is pretty typical for a lot of modern Transformers. It's just something that I'm really not a huge fan of. And using the Studio Series Jazz Mold, there really isn't like a ton of space in here to actually store it. So I get it, but you know, obviously um, it's kind of a bummer. So I'm going to leave this, <laughs> leave the accessory off in a box myself because it doesn't store, but that is where you're supposed to put it uh, if you want to store it in this mode. You can also plug it in on, on the back here like that, which I don't think looks any better, but eh, you know, those are your options there. Uh, now in terms of size comparisons, just for the standard one, here he is with Kingdom Sideswipe, you know, pretty, uh, pretty comparable there pretty average size deluxe car. I think they look pretty good together. Uh, here he is with the Studio Series Jazz. So you can see really how much was changed here. Like they uh, they really don't don't even look like they're the same mold in, in this mode at all, but they are, um, or at least, you know, some skeleton of the same mold, but yeah, that's what they look like together. And then last but not least, here he is with, uh, with Transformers Prime Breakdown, and then one of the, you know, both of the, uh, the flying and the, and the driving Viacons there. It looks like he's maybe un untabbed or something somewhere along there, looked a little offset there, but that's what he looks like with some other Transformers Prime uh, Decepticons. And I think he looks pretty good with all of them. I think he looks especially good with Breakdown. Like, I think that this scale works really well for these two vehicles. Because, like, you know, a reason I haven't bought a lot of the, uh, like, the new versions of the Transformers Prime characters is that I think that, like, generally speaking, the, the original Transformers Prime figures are pretty good. And just because, you know, they're the Transformers Prime design and they, you know, a lot of them don't have noses and the heads have kind of like a, you know, a, a sleeker, I guess, uh, like proportions than, than, G1, than the G1 designs. I don't necessarily think that they don't fit in with each other. Like I didn't get the Prime Universe bulkhead from Legacy because like, I think that the Transformers Prime First Edition bulkhead still 
sits perfectly well with any G1 style figure. Like, you know, they're a little bit different stylistically, but I think it still works out. Um, so I don't necessarily think that getting just like honest to goodness, new, uh, like, new versions of the prime characters would mean that they wouldn't fit in very well with G1 characters. And, uh, you know, as a result, I think that these guys fit in just fine with each other. Like I think they you know, scale well in this mode and they scale pretty well in a, in alt mo in a robot mode as well. But yeah, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's really more relevant for his robot mode, which is much more of a departure from the, uh, from the cartoon design. But yeah, I think they look really good together and that's important because they were, you know, partners in the show. Um, in terms of transformation, obviously it's pretty much exact same as uh, as the Studio Series Jazz Mold. There are you know a few more tabs in places that uh, that that mold didn't originally have, um, so it's not exactly the same. I mean, all the parts move in the same way, but you know it's not <laughs> it's not a one to one uh, you know same process or anything like that. But yeah, to start off here, we just want to um, we want to untab these doors. They tab into the arms here. Uh, unlike Jazz, they actually clip into these back parts, which actually makes the vehicle mode a lot more stable because, you know, Jazz had this issue where these pieces could just like rotate around, which, uh, you know, sometimes made it hard to get all four wheels sitting on the ground in, in vehicle mode. Whereas uh, with him, it actually locks in place. So you just want to untab it from the arm there and kind of pull it out like that. It's got a couple like interlocking tabs there. And, uh, you know, I've seen a bit of stress on these. I think you just have to be kind of careful with how you do it. But uh, yeah, you just want to rotate these bits out like that on both sides. Just like that. Uh, then we want to um, take the arms here underneath and just like Jazz, they rotate out on the wheel section here. So we can rotate them out like that. Then you want to take this uh, this back section, it'll untab from the legs here. And uh, the, the actual clear plastic on him feels like thicker than it did on on studio series jazz which makes it feel a little bit less dangerous to like untab these sections like it feels more sturdy it's kind of hard to describe um so i i don't know just the vibe i get from it is it, it feels like it's less likely to break i had never had any breakage issues with my studio series jazz but I, it does kind of feel scary to handle sometimes so I, it's nice to see that you know somehow this is redesigned to to not feel quite as bad um and then you want to untab the entire windshield section from the uh the front here and just kind of double hinge it down like that uh now for the legs here we want to untab them now this section i feel like the tabs that hold the legs together i feel like are a little bit too tight um this is not really an issue on studio series jazz and i definitely see a bit more stress on these tabs especially since there's no real good way to like you know, you kind of have to wiggle them like along the the you know thin end of the tab to actually untab them, which is a little bit unfortunate. So hopefully those wear down a little bit in time rather than actually breaking. But yeah, you just want to separate the legs and then like jazz, you just want to unfold them at the knee and then tab them in at the knee. Flip out the feet. And then these sections here, uh, they they kind of you kind of have to pull them out a little bit just to actually get the clearance to rotate them down because otherwise they feel like really locked in place. But Otherwise, works just like it did with Jazz. Uh, you want to take the little uh, abdomen section here and rotate that around just like that. Uh, then we want to take this section of the hood, which actually kind of like loosely locks in. So if you're having issues where this is constantly compressing uh, in the vehicle mode, you actually want to push it up so it actually clicks into place so it doesn't do that. Um, but yeah, you want to bring that down like that, take the whole section with the head and rotate that up like this, and then bring this down and then take this section and rotate it down just enough so that these two slots on that section will go on over these two tabs on the uh, the abdomen there just like that then we can bring out bring down his arms flip out the hands and rotate them forward and then very similar to studio series 86 jazz you just want to take the uh, the backpack here kind of start folding down these panels and then you can take this back section and it will actually double hinge into here and then you can continue folding on those panels there are a couple like tabs on this clear section that correspond to slots on the doors it doesn't really either they're so loose that it doesn't feel like they're tabbing it at all or they just actually don't tab in and they're too thick but it doesn't really matter so i don't i haven't really tried to force it but then you want to take that section and then kind of double hinge it down and you kind of have to you know finagle the double hinge here a little bit so you can get it to actually sit 
flat uh, on his back because sometimes it does want to kind of like spring back up. It, it just takes a little bit of doing, but that's basically how you want it to sit. And there we have Knockout in his robot mode. And uh, yeah, you know, as a robot, I think he looks good. Unfortunately, I think that he misses a few marks in terms of like actually looking like the character he's supposed to, because like, you know, the head, the head sculpt is nice. They've G1ified it a little bit, but mostly it's, it's keeping the same shapes. And I think that works pretty well. Um, the one thing that I, that's really a bummer for me on him is that like part of the original knockouts design had a number of things that added a few more splashes of yellow into it. Like one, he had the whole thing where his, uh, you know, the hood of his car kind of like sat at an angle here. And then you saw these like yellow ribs on the inside of the inside of the hood. And I think that that really added like a lot to the character in terms of like, you know, making him uh, like the identity of the character and then he also had two of his vehicle mode wheels sitting behind his uh behind the, uh, like as part of the backpack and the wheels you know have the gold on them so as it is the only splashes of yellow that he gets are these little bits of gold on the ankle which i think is a little bit unfortunate because it, it kind of makes it feel like it's not you know really staying that true to the identity of the figure and like I get it. The whole thing with the hood would have been really difficult to uh, to under engineer and, you know, to try to keep it more g one fied They've made him just kind of like a classic, like, hood chest kind of robot, which is fine. But, like, having wheels stick behind his head is not something that's, like, totally alien to G1. So sort of feels like they didn't do that just because they wanted to make him a, a, a retool of an existing figure, which is kind of a bummer because like, I, I think that he does kind of lose out on a few of those details that really make it feel like the character, unfortunately, but eh, what can you do? Otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. It's a really nice shade of red and I, I think it definitely does uh, pop on the shelf. Um, in terms of articulation, obviously he's very similar to Jazz. Uh, the head is on a ball joint here so it can rotate around and gets a little bit of wiggle there. There. The uh, the shoulders here can swivel around like that and hinge out to the side. He's got a bicep swivel, about 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. The wrists can only bend in. He's got a uh, waist swivel there, which bumps into the backpack a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, the hips can go forward and back and out to the side. He's got a thigh swivel here. Uh, he's got, I mean, a little bit less than 90 degrees of bend at the knee unless you unplug that joint and bring it a little further, but then you're starting to like dislocate the knee. So eh, I don't know. Um, thankfully on, at least on my copy, these pegs stay, these tabs stay in relatively well. Uh, they did on my jazz as well, but I know there's been a bit of variance in terms of, uh, you know, how well those actually pegged in. Uh, the feet, uh, the toes can kind of hinge down, but that, I don't think that really accomplishes a whole lot. But he also does have ankle tilt, which is nice. So, you know, pretty similar to Jazz, obviously. Um, the legs on mine feel maybe, I don't know, they feel a little bit loose. They're obviously, you know, I'm shaking them around and they're not flopping around or anything like that. But when moving them around, they definitely feel just maybe a touch smoother than I'd like them to, but eh, not the end of the world. Uh, in terms of his accessory, obviously you can bring this back on. He's got this extra handle out like that, so you can hold the uh, staff rather than actually holding it on the bit because, you know, his hands are, are closed. So, you know, I think that looks pretty good. Although again, it is kind of a bummer that that doesn't store in vehicle mode. Uh, you can store it in robot mode, however, just by pegging it onto his, uh, his back here. And I think that works relatively well. Um, if you don't want to use this as a staff, you can separate these pieces. Uh, you can have him just like hold this as some sort of like weird sci-fi gun, I guess. And then you can also have him hold this section like a longer gun. And that's kind of a, a neat, you know, use of that piece there. It's a little bit strange as a weapon, but I think that works relatively well. Though, again, kind of a bummer for me because I'm, I'm going to put this in a box just because it doesn't store in vehicle mode in any way, shape or form. And that's kind of a deal breaker for me personally. But Anyway, that, that is how they incorporate with the figure. Uh, in terms of size comparisons, we can bring back on the, uh, the figures that we looked at him with before. 
First and foremost, here he is again with uh, Kingdom Sideswipe. Just so you can see, you know, pretty average size deluxe there. Obviously, you know, so was Jazz, so that's not surprising. Uh, here he is again with Jazz, so you can see just how different this really looks. Like, a lot of the detail is very different. I think the only part that I'm noticing that is the same, or the only few parts, uh, it looks like the abdomen section is the same, the crotch piece is the same, the arms... Uh, Seems like the same shoulder section and the same, like, you know, uh, connector bit there. Different forearms. I think the fists are the same. Uh, the upper legs are different. It looks like the actual five pieces are probably different, too, which is odd. Uh, the lower legs seem to be the same. And then, obviously, like, the feet are different. The side bits are different. The whole chest is different. The head is obviously different. So, you know, some, some shared parts. But really, by and large, it's a... Uh, pretty reshelled figure which is nice and now for la last but not least here he is with breakdown and a couple vehicons uh just so you can see what he looks like with them and uh yeah i think it's a pretty good looking display here uh he's a nice size with breakdown i think that that's more or less the size that they were in the uh, in the cartoon. Maybe he was a little bit smaller compared to breakdown in the cartoon but i think that works pretty well and this is what i'm saying is like you know, he's this, he's stylized like the prime figures and he's got like the kind of like longer face or anything like that or something like that. But like they still look good together. Like I don't think the prime design is the prime designs are really like so not G1 that they don't fit in together. Like it's it's not like they're like the movie designs that are like just crazy and a bunch of knives. Like they're a little bit more complicated than G1 uh, in terms of like where the parts end up and stuff like that. But overall, I think that they all still pretty, pretty pretty decently fit in with each other so i don't know would be nice if eventually we'll get a new maybe we'll get a new version of knockout that is more like you know directly based on his prime design uh, and then he could still fit in with other g1 characters but as for right now i think that they look pretty good together and uh yeah i guess that's pretty much all there is to it you know it's a pretty good figure overall i'd say that just in general, the uh, the second wave of Legacy has been pretty good. I think that probably the the like the the lame duck of the wave is probably a little one. If I had to pick one, like it, that's a good figure too, but that's probably the one that I'm you know kind of feeling the least solid about overall. Knockout is maybe a close second there, but uh, Tarantulas is fantastic. Wild Rider is pretty good too, but overall, I think that all four of them are uh, are pretty decent. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much all there is to it. If you uh, enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. I do reviews every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And without further ado, here we have Transformers Generations Legacy Deluxe Class Prime Universe Knockout.